Okay, um, what I have here right now is I have our applet up and running and then here I have a general output. So this general output, if you remember from our last video, is keeping track of the position of the mouse. So you can see as I move this mouse around, it's giving me my, the position of that mouse. And also if I now press the keys to move the black square around, you'll start seeing the respond of saying the key is pressed. So we've added various listeners to this program to keep track of when events happen. So what I want to do now is I want to make a red rectangle that is that tracks the same position of my mouse. So the first thing I have to do is keep track of these numbers on the that are that are being outputted here. So let's just close this up and let's dive into our program here. So what we know here is that we do system print line the mouse event get x and the mouse event get y. So one approach I can do is I can scroll up here to the top and I'm going to make two more fields. And these are going to be for the red rectangle position fields. So private and cur x for the mouse. And let's set that initially to say 0 private int cur x for the mouse. Oh, sorry, cur y for the mouse. And we'll set that to 0 as well. So what we're going to do now is as I move that mouse around, I want to keep track of the position of it using these two fields. So I'm going to come down into my mouse event, and I'm going to say cur x for the mouse is equivalent to e.getx, and the cur y for the mouse is equal to e.gety. So what that now does is takes the position, the x position for the mouse and puts it into the field cur x, m, and it gets the y position for the mouse and puts in the field cur y m. And now at this point if I build this to make sure everything's okay and then I run this, nothing, nothing happens as far as visually because I haven't done anything with that information yet. So now we're going to go back into our program and we're going to do something with this. And if we remember that all our, our anything we render on the screen is done in the paint method. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say g.fill rec and I'm going to draw a rectangle at the current x for the mouse and the current y for the mouse and I'm going to make this rectangle 20 by 20. So now if I build this file and then I run it now you'll see there's a a rectangle that follows me around. But I don't want this to be a black rectangle, I want to make it red. So what happens with the paint method is we have to set, we can set the graphics color. So the default graphics color is black. But what I can do here is I can say g.setColor and I can set the color to color dot and I'm going to set it to red. And now I'll probably have to import this Oh, looks like I've already imported the color. And now what happens is it prints out the small rectangle, changes the color, and then prints out the larger rectangle. So if I run this now, I have a nice red rectangle floating around here on the screen. So in the next video, we need to talk about well how to, how to do something when these two rectangles intersect each other. Okay, hope that helped.